We come now to why motion occurs. In the past, with kinematic equations, we uh, described motion, uh, but in this chapter, chapter four of OpenStax College Physics is uh, where this material comes from. Uh, Newton's laws will enable us to better understand why motion occurs, specifically why acceleration occurs, and then uh, we'll apply acceleration, of course, and obtain velocity and uh, position information. Uh, so Newton lived in the 1600s and towards the uh, latter part of the 1600s he eventually uh, published a, a book that uh, contains his uh, outline of the scientific laws that describe motion. Uh, he, he worked on this uh, well, I think in the 1660s and uh, eventually was encouraged to, uh, to publish his work. But uh, Let's talk about force just a little bit. You're used to pushing things or pulling things. Here we have the top view of some ice skaters and uh, ice skater number one pushing off to the right on the uh, person in the middle. Ice skater number two pushing in this diagram upward. Um, those two forces can be combined. They are vectors. Force is a vector. And we must apply our techniques of vectors in analyzing problems that involve force. So the free body diagram here will be an important concept. Instead of cluttering up our diagram with stick figures and so forth in this early part of the, uh, the course, we'll represent the person just with a dot. Now that dot's at the center of mass of the person. We won't uh, worry about that uh, right now, but we have a dot that represents the person. We have the two forces that act on the person. Uh, in our free body diagram, we only put on forces that act on the object of interest. So there are some other forces here, of course, but uh, uh, we don't need to worry about them, actually. It simplifies our diagrams if we only draw the forces that act on the person if we're interested in what happens to this person because of the two forces that are being applied. This particular problem is a little bit simplified. Uh, force one and force two Force 1 is in the x-axis, force 2 is in the y-axis, set up a coordinate system that way. And in typical problems, uh, at least one of these forces will be at an angle, and you will have to find the x and y components of the force, and then add the x to components together, add the y components together. Um, but that will come with experience. Force can be measured. One way to do so is with a spring scale. Uh, it turns out that the force delivered by a spring is proportional to the stretch of the spring. If you double the stretch, you double the force, um, as long as you're not distorting the, sp the spring coil. It's a reasonable uh, approximation that if you triple the stretch, you triple the force. So we'll, we'll have some spring scales that you can, uh, can use in class. So it's reproducible. We can take measurements with it from one laboratory to another laboratory. Um, so that's one way to, to look at forces. Let's take a look at a summary of Newton's laws of motion. Um, the first law is that an object has a constant velocity unless there's a non-zero net force acting on the object. So, what we're discussing here is the situation where the net force is zero. Either there's no force acting on the object or there are uh, multiple forces and as you add those vectors together you come up with a result of zero. As zero net force we have constant velocity. Zero net force we have constant velocity. Sometimes this is called the law of inertia. That objects in motion tend to stay in motion. The second law is the one that's more general and will be uh, the law we'll use in this chapter and many future chapters. Um, and the verbal of this, the net external force that acts on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration of the object. F equals ma. This force is a vector. The acceleration is a vector. And something to take note of right away. Uh, We'll be working out the magnitudes here of either the force or the mass or the acceleration. The direction of the acceleration is always the same as the direction of the net force that acts on the object. 
also, just emphasizing this again. Um, you can ignore forces that might be stated in the problem if they don't act on the object. Ignore any forces that don't act on the object. This force in F equals MA is the net external force that acts on the object. And uh, second uh, thing to take note of, you can ignore internal forces. When we're talking about objects that have some extended size, not just an atom, but a pencil or a car or a wagon, you know, there are a lot of nuts and bolts in cars. We do not have to worry about the forces on each individual nut and bolt in a car. We can simplify the car to just a single object and then take a look at any external forces acting on that object. Um, the force of friction that, that causes the road to push on the car. Um, maybe a tow truck has a cable attached to the bumper of the car pulling the car forward. That would be an external force. Now the wind that acts on force that acts on the car that would be an external force. So we don't have to worry about somebody grabbing the steering wheel inside the car. That would be an internal force. And that would not be part of the calculation of the net external force. And you'll get that. Uh, this will come more naturally to you with some practice. Does F equals M A agree with the first law? First law talks about a situation where the net force is zero. If the net force is zero, the acceleration must be zero. In order to have equality, the mass is not zero. So the acceleration is zero. And if the acceleration is zero, then there's no change to the velocity. We do have constant velocity. So yes, it's in agreement. F equal MA is more general. Uh, does force cause acceleration or does acceleration cause force? F equals MA. Well, it, it is the situation that the force causes the acceleration. Uh, the acceleration has a certain value that makes MA equal to the F, but it's force that causes acceleration. Uh, forces always come in pair, the third law, and this will come later. Uh, uh, videos will discuss that, not this video. But if object A applies a force to object B, Object B will apply the same magnitude of force to object A. Two forces are in different directions, 180 degrees apart, and the uh, forces act on different objects. <coughs> so here's a person holding a bag of dog food and uh, holding above the table. The dog food has some weight, W. The person has to apply a force upward, and if they're just holding it, looking for a good spot to place it down on the table, then the net force would be zero and the acceleration would be zero. If the upward force on the dog food uh, due to the person matches the weight of the dog food, then the acceleration would be zero. So here the person has placed the dog food on the table. The dog food has the same weight. We have to have some other force than the person's hand now uh, provide the upward force to uh, keep the dog food with uh, its position here above the floor, not follow the floor. Now it turns out that this table will flex, uh, and essentially the bonds between the atoms and molecules in here are springs, and the extension of those bonds and molecules creates a force that provides the upward force, sometimes called the normal force, we used N, if uh, we're talking about the force uh, between two objects, one object in contact pushing on the other. So some people pushing on a wagon. And it gets a little more complicated here. That's why we need these free body diagrams to condense our thinking and uh, make sure we only put forces that act on the object into our free body diagram. And you can uh, investigate those to children, an adult, and we'll do some calculations in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, force uh, in basketball here. Which is going to have the larger acceleration? Same person pushing on a basketball or a person pushing in a car? And I hope you uh, do agree the acceleration of the basketball is going to be a lot larger. With constant force, the acceleration and the mass are inversely proportional. If the mass is smaller, the acceleration is greater. If the mass is greater, the acceleration is smaller. Um, and we'll work out that with numbers. So there's our introduction to Newton's laws.